Okay, everybody, welcome to lab number eight. This should be interesting because I'm running this lab by myself in my bedroom. And I just grabbed some equipment from Cabrillo Physics Lab and trying to do this at home. Bear with me, we'll see how this turns out. So this is lab eight on conservation of energy. And I know we haven't really had much conservation of energy yet, but this lab is gonna kind of serve as an introduction to energy conservation and it's gonna consist of two parts. So just so you know, this setup for the first part, let me see if I can adjust this, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the situation is I have a cart that's on top of an inclined plane. We're going to assume that this inclined plane is frictionless. What I'm gonna do is let the cart go, and what we're going to do is measure the speed of the cart. Remember, these are the wireless carts. They measure their own speed. So in terms of conservation of energy, one, we're going to define our y equals zero, basically our origin for the elevation at the height of the cart where the cart is right before it hits the end. So in essence, that means that the gravitational potential energy right at the end of the tract is zero but the cart is moving, so it has kinetic energy. We're going to start the cart from rest, which means it has no kinetic energy, but it does have gravitational potential energy. And what happens is, as I let this cart go, the elevation is decreasing, which means it's losing gravitational potential energy, but the speed is increasing, which means it's gaining kinetic energy. And if we define our system as the cart and the earth, then in essence, any forces acting are either going to be internal forces, gravity pulling down on the cart, or what we're gonna see is the work done by these forces is gonna be zero. Meaning if I don't include the track as part of my system, then the track is exerting a normal force on the car but what we're gonna see is that normal force doesn't do any work. So in essence, what we're gonna have is the total energy of this cart to begin with equals the total energy of this cart right before it hits the end of the track. And so what we're looking at is, is energy conserved? Is the kinetic energy of the cart right before it hits the end equal to the potential energy it starts with? So again, gonna start the cart from rest which means it has no kinetic energy, all gravitational potential energy, MGY. As this cart moves down the track, the potential energy is decreasing because the height is decreasing, but it's moving faster, so the kinetic energy is increasing. If I define Y equals zero as the height the cart has right before it hits the, gra or hits the end of the track, then it has no gravitational potential energy to end with, but it does have kinetic. So the sum of kinetic plus potential at the beginning should equal the sum of kinetic plus potential at the end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do this experiment for you. I'm going to do it 10 times, and then I'm going to show you sort of what the results look like, and then I'm going to, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do next. Just bear with me. So again, the experiment is just gonna be, I'm releasing this cart from rest. I'm measuring is what is the speed right before it hits the end there and looking at is energy conserved? Is the total energy of the cart at the very beginning equal to the total energy of the cart at the very end? Okay, so now I'm going to run through the experiments. I'm gonna show you sort of what the data looks like and then I'm gonna give you what the 10 different trials, what the speed ended up being at the end for each trial. So I'm gonna click record, and I'm gonna release this thing from rest. And you can kind of see up here, this is one kind of cool, look at this. This is a plot of velocity versus time. It's a straight line telling us that the acceleration is constant. Now. If this is really a frictionless inclined plane, which it's not exactly obviously because there is some friction, there is some air resistance, but acceleration down a frictionless inclined plane 
should be g sine theta. And so we do expect this acceleration to be constant. Even if there is some friction, we would expect the force of friction to be constant. So the acceleration would be slightly less than g sine theta. But if I calculated the slope of this curve, it would give me the acceleration down the incline plane. So I can see that it's moving at a constant acceleration. It's increasing its speed the entire time, and it reaches its maximum speed right before it hits. And then if I want to take data, I could do this coordinate tool. So my speed for the very first one was 1.16 meters per second. So that's how fast it was going right before it hit the end of the track. So let's actually do another example. So I can record this again, let it go. And in this case, the speed right before it hit the ground was, or not hit the ground, but hit the end of the track, 1.175 meters per second. Okay, so in order to get the gravitational potential energy, we need the initial height that the cart starts at. And in order to get the kinetic energy, we need the mass of the cart. So let's get both of those values right now. So to get the mass of the cart, I just got a little digital scale, putting the cart on it. And do 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 you can see the mass is 251. 0.68 grams, I would just use 252 grams. So 0.252 kilograms is the mass of the cart. And in terms of the height, keep in mind I am measuring the height relative to the height of the cart when it's at the end of the track. So in essence, the difference in elevation is really just the height of this lab jack. Since basically I have the lab jack lined up with the end here, and I'm defining y equals zero as the height of the cart when it's at the very bottom. So in essence, the initial height is then just going to be the height of the lab jack. And I don't know how well you can see if I can zoom into it, but can I zoom in well enough? Eh, probably not. So let's not worry about it. I will let you know that the initial ah, the initial height <laughs> ah, online learning so fun. The initial height of the cart is eight centimeters. The final height of the cart is zero. So mass of the cart we just got, initial height we just got, and now I'm going to look at the data give you what the 10 different speeds were for the 10 different trials, and then talk about how we're going to do the data analysis.